Let me first start off by saying that I'm not a role model, I'm not a motivational speaker or anything like that. If anything, um, I just, I feel like if I had an opportunity to help somebody, why not, you know? So whether if it's just giving you past experiences that I had or just how I deal with certain things, I figure if it'll change somebody's life, why not give it to them? My name is Mr. Eating and this is what I do. All right, this is a common problem for everybody in general. Everyone has a problem with saving money. I feel like when it comes to saving money, you have to balance needs and wants. For example, I have these new pair of shoes. I don't need another pair. Do I want another pair? Sooner or later I'm going to, but I don't need them. Now if I have like a hole in my shoe or flap flapping off, you know, obviously that means you need one. But let's be honest, how many people have like eight to 10 pairs of shoes or maybe five to seven? I only have like maybe three or four. That's it, that's all I need. And one's for um, running and working out, the other two are for casual, that's it. I don't go out and buy sneakers, I don't buy new clothes all the time. I literally go shopping like maybe once every six months, maybe even longer, honestly. So that's just one thing. Another thing, um, something I watched or something I heard and it stuck with me a lot was, here's the difference between a rich man and a poor man. Rich people, they buy assets. Poor people, they buy luxuries. Luxuries, they depreciate over time. Assets, they're worth something even in the long term. That's why people get stuff that appreciate, or that's why people invest in stocks, which is actually a risk, you know, because considering that stock markets can crash, but they're doing it because they, they feel like it was gonna better themselves in the long run. That's what, that's what separates for that or that separates I'm sorry that separates the difference between rich guy and a poor guy now I don't I don't, I don't want to speak for everyone when I say this but when it comes to saving money to me if you know all right this is gonna cost this much this is gonna call cost that much you should be able to live within your means. You should not be going above and beyond. What they say, uh, champagne taste with beer money. You know, so um, if you live without, if you live within your means, you should be able to handle it, and you should be able to live life better. Me personally, I never had a problem with saving money. I've been saving money since like my sophomore year in high school. When I was like doing odd jobs for my neighbor. Matter of fact, this is probably the only time I actually splurged and messed up when it came to saving money. I was dating at the time, and I saved probably like $300, $400 on odd jobs that I did for my neighbor. And while I was dating this girl, I went to New York City. And while I was there, I was like, oh, her birthday's coming up. Let me spend some money on her. You know, me being the good guy I was. Blah, blah, blah. I spent two hundred dollars on her. That's half of what I earned, you know. I mean, obviously we're not dating anymore, but um, I felt like I wasted then two hundred dollars. I could have used that on my car note or whatever, you know. So that kind of little <laughs> me up a little bit. But other than that, I never really had a problem with saving money. I I still probably have my old paycheck from my first job in my bank account right now. So it's kind of it's, it's just, I've been blessed, <laughs> let's say that. Some advice I would give for the next generation is if you grew up not having anything, like, you know, the best gear growing up, and you see kids that have the best clothes, like just wearing all Nike, all brand names, and you just sit there with the generic stuff, don't, don't feed into it. Don't feel like you have to have those things just in order to be cool. Don't feel like you have to get those, the Nike, the Adidas. Don't feel like you have to get those to impress people. You shouldn't even be trying to impress people. 
think about it to yourself that um you got what you got it's up to you to do something with it now you could think of it as okay your parents work hard just for you to have these clothes so you shouldn't be worried about what they got you should be happy with what you got or you could think of it like oh i'm saving money <laughs> I'm saving money, like not spending fifty, sixty dollars on a pair of Nike Nike pants or you know sneakers. You better off just wearing like regular jeans. What, what they call them? Uh, <laughs> what was the brand brand name? Shorts called um, Dickies. You better off wearing Dickies. Yeah. Another thing I would add is build your credit right now. Get a savings account right now. Your credit score should be over at 800 by the time you're my age. Reason being is because when your credit's higher, life just becomes a whole lot easier. But when you build your credit, always remember two things. Is A, spend less than 30% of the balance they give you. And B, pay it down before the interest kicks in. Pay it right away. Reason being is, when the interest kicks in, you will forever be paying that interest and not bringing down the principal. See, banks don't want to tell you that. You know, they probably gonna get mad at me, try to flag me in this video because I'm giving you this knowledge they don't want you to know. Now, this is how I build credit. If you feel like this, what I'm saying is not true, you don't think that I'm telling you the truth, then I recommend you to go take classes to help build your credit because they do provide them. Some places do pro provide classes because some some people feel like they wanna help you succeed too, like me. But yeah, that's probably my um, biggest advice because the, these banks will try to mess with you. If you wanna get a house, you wanna get a car, gotta have credit, immaculate credit, to where they give you the lowest interest rate possible. My name is Mr. Eating and this is what I do.